Hey there, Vikings. Radamon here. Thanks for tuning in to the third episode of Crusader Kings 3 Northern Lords, which originally aired live on Twitch. The choices are getting worse. Okay, pour me a drink. This is quite the search for wayward soldiers, I must say. Let's hope that uh, the benefit of this raises my levies. And there we go. I gain a v very valuable martial lifestyle perk. Uh, the last of my troops have made it back to popcorn, and the order has been restored. Uh, though this was hardly a display of military brilliance, I have gained a new perspective on my army and the individual soldiers of which it is composed. Bada bing, bada boom. So we are going to do Engineered for Destruction, which gives me naval speed and siege weapon effectiveness. Next will be raid speed and supply cap. Uh, capacity to try to round out the uh, uh, what I have left. So here is a bit of a problem, so a bit of a pickle here. Um, if we are to ignore the low control, I can to go to war again with um, uh, with the southern uh, Jarl who reconquered, but he has very superior forces because he comes with an ally, as you can see. Alone, easily defeated. But with the ally, that's a bit of a problem. Uh, then, if we take a look at the uh, way, way north, I can aim to conquer a county. And we have about similar forces. I think I could win that. Uh, the duchy, however, uh, or the invading the entire kingdom, um, if we want to capture the duchy, uh, that might not be a terrible thing to do. I would become a duchess. It would just be a duchess of a foreign land. Uh, not my home, but it would cost me more piety because these guys, of course, are of my faith. Um, a third choice here is declaring war against way north. And uh, again, I could invade the county or duchy. Um, so there's those choices. And then there's, there's another one, which is what just conquered up here. The pro problem is they have, uh, again because of allies, a vastly superior force. Uh, I, you know, honestly, I find it really annoying that everybody is calling on allies and it just can't be mano a mano, but that's just the way it is. Um, so the wars that I could wage, really when they come down to is, what war should I go on? Extreme North north go raiding so there's the three obvious choices there and you can pick amongst them and now uh tyke let's go sway tyke again because we uh we did harm our uh our relationship with tyke a little bit in the uh on the march exercise and then i'm gonna ransom who are you Yeah, I'm going to ransom this guy for money. Oh, I, I don't even think that was money. I gained a favor hook on him. Who are you? You're just a wandering... I could invite him to my court. He's actually a pretty good diplomat. Um, he's better than my current one. I'm going to use my hook to invite him to my court. So he's a courtier that I, uh, I had imprisoned and instead, oddly, I invited him to my court. Uh, I will have you all decide whether or not I put him in as chancellor, but, uh, you know, I can always switch up uh, a whole lot. He could also become my, um, my steward because he's a pretty good steward. He's also a brilliant strategist, but uh, he's not as good as Tyke. Tyke is better. Okay, go raiding is clearly the choice. So, uh, let's go ahead and do that. I think what I'm going to do is... So, to, to do this, uh, let me move this rally point. Raise all his raiders. 
And yeah, absolutely, I'm gonna go mess with the jerks in the south. I'm gonna raid Nibelheim. If I can't own it, I will raid it. And the thing with raiders is it's not likely that the ally is gonna come uh, messing with me. So I can try to inflict a lot of harm to this uh, Jarldom uh, without having to incur a formal uh, attack. So, go raiding. <laughs> I get to loot two gold. All right, hold on. Let me let me raid a slightly better target. Oh yes, no. Come here, come here. Oh, injured husband. What? Oh yeah, I guess he's still injured from that fight like ages and ages and ages ago. I forgot about that. Um, all right, so we have four options here. Do no more than necessary. Is too a precaution. Do something ridiculous. There will be no treatment or let him decide. Let my husband decide. I forgot that he was still injured from that fight like so long ago. And he is trusting, callous, calm, a brilliant strategist, a cautious leader, uh, intelligent, but unfortunately very wounded. And do more, no more than necessary. Going to be the popular choice. All right, let's see. You will probably win, it says. This is the uh, this is the guy that took Nibelheim, so I hope I win because child benefits from spouse's tutelage. Uh, Sky is receiving a good education due to my husband's tutelage. I like it. Oh man, we have such a battle advantage right now. Unfortunately, they have uh, Bondi who are countering my archers, so that's a bit of a disadvantage. Because the body here are uh, shielded. Our champion Tyke ripped the head off of Grimir and became a berserker. Oh, oh, oh Tyke! Tyke! And I just gained a whole bunch of extra money from taxes. Uh, in spite of my steward's poor stewardship. Hang on, let's, let's take a look at Tyke. Oh, Mr. Tyke. So Tyke is now a berserker. With a much higher prowess. Um, and Dread. He's also a Bino. You wouldn't know it, because he's covered in armor. Um, so, awesome. Good job, Tyke. I think that's the right Tyke, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's a Berserker. So, well done. And look at his martial skill. Ooh. Posture check. You got it. Alright, so we're, we're gonna continue raiding here. Uh, but it, this isn't really about the gold. It's about just messing with them. Now, I do have the advantage uh, where I can build... Um, ooh. I can build something at uh, Emheim right now. So, what should I build? We have got... Uh, Palisades, which is, you know, walls, essentially. Defenses. Uh, war camps. Which would be... Uh, like, sparring grounds to increase levies and uh, knights. We've got gathering halls. which increases uh, levies in control, or markets, which increases uh, tax. Or, you know what? Hold on, one other thing. Um, save my money. Or we could just not spend the money and alternatively just keep, keep saving, which would be a fifth option. Oh, they're going home. Oh no! This was so worth raiding. I'm I'm glad I'm raiding them rather than I'm I'm taking something. Cause uh, all right, I'm going to want to regain my. So I finished raiding. It's really I have two out of the eighty-seven <laughs> possible loot. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to replenish my numbers and then head straight back for the Jarldom here. And, uh, and rip them a new one. There's also the possibility of increasing Latteheim instead of uh, M, but M is cheaper. So, I'm gonna 
upgrade to M. And it looks like Markets, again, will be a slightly win out against, uh, against Gathering Halls. It does, of course, cost me uh, prestige, but that's fine. And then here I have 11 months left at the trading outpost that I originally had uh, signed for. Let's see if I can't replenish my numbers pretty quick. I guess I only really need to enter all my, my own territory, but whatever. All right, well supplied. Come on, come on. We're going to go to their heart now. I don't much care for them. Is three better than four? <laughs> you mean two, I think? It's a matter of personal preference. I didn't get on board with two early enough to really know what was going on in two. So unless they come to defend here, I'm gonna raid up to 15 gold, which then I can use to fund uh, a simple palisade. Oh, you know, that was interesting. There was a simple palisade queued in in Latteheim. I didn't, of course, pay for this. Um, but we're going to have defender advantage, fort level, and garrison here at Latteheim as a result. Uh, so that's, that's quite good. A free palisade. But unfortunately, we have low control, which uh, created desertion in Latteheim as well. So what's interesting is the Palisade will add to the levees, and then the desertion will lower the levees. So it's like, boop, boop. Can't decide which. All right, here we go. Give me your money. There we are. We got 15. Oh, no. Where's my money? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, we have the loot. All right, let's continue raiding these jerks. And uh, Tyke just got swayed by us. Uh, so council, uh, there is the question of the chancellor because we had a hook on this guy. So I'm going to ask you if you want me to replace chancellor. Uh, and I'm probably going to spell it wrong. No, I'm not. Yes. No. So the prisoner that I used my hook to, uh, to forced to join my oh there we go raid speed increased 25% good timing raid or trade okay uh, you guys want me to replace I'm gonna keep this pause for a second so I can uh, have you pull for this so before I do anything else court or uh, council sorry chancellor Sort by... Wait, where'd he go? Oh, come on. Did he leave? Seriously? He left. He left, like, within the day that I... Okay. For real? Did he, like, die of old age or something? Yeah, no, legitimately he's gone. So I won't... I can't be doing that. Uh, but raid or trade? Um, as my troops and I prepare to sack the lands of Vestfold, our first scouts report back. It seems the local town are rich, but many are heavily fortified, and we could well be caught out by vengeful armies before we can break into the juicier or juiciest targets. All's not lost, though. The art of good raiding is still exploiting opportunity, and we could perhaps arrange trade and tribute in exchange for staying our blades. So, here are the three options. Perhaps the local chieftain will be amenable. Uh, chieftain here, opinion will go up and will add loot to current raiding army. But I do spend prestige. I continue raiding them. Pillage it anyway. Or, um, you pillage and refuse to think about trading and instead raiding for the rest of my life. Basically, refuse trade forever, which is a pretty extreme um, of the three options, but of course, they will be offered. And here's this chieftain. 
this chieftain of this area. Now, one of the advantages to allying this chieftain is it would make these guys less vulnerable if I could break the alliance between these two and uh, form an alliance with him through marriage or something. But then, of course, you know, there might be the advantage of just killing them off, too. Either or. One of the things to, to realize that in the Crusader Kings, um, it's not always in your best benefit to always go with martial force. If I could marry a daughter to them, that would be a really good way to subvert their power, you know, or marry, counsel, you know, uh, other people and arrange marriages like that. It doesn't necessarily just have to be with swords. But it looks like, uh, looks like we are going to try to get a truce for five years. Offers rejected. Okay. Well, we tried. They rejected it. And uh, I'm just going to keep raiding them then. Mr. I don't want your truce. Well, then I'll take your gold. You big idiot. You big, big idiot. Okay, so we have... How much gold do we have? We got 30 gold. Um... I don't think there's... There's really no more raid... Barely any more raid loot anywhere. There's three gold here, which is really not worth it. Three gold here. Three... Yeah, there's basically no more money left. I could go south. There's 13 here. 6, 15. Or start messing with the this big enemy here, but... Um, I'd rather just bleed these southerners uh, dry as a result of them stealing my, uh, my duchy title. So it's less risk, less reward, uh, but... I'm building up a rivalry, I suppose. Okay, come on, finish. Fire and blood. The settlement of Oslo. All right, I'm paused. Okay, the settlement of Oslo, an important stronghold in greater Vingelmork, has fallen to my raiders. We have the run of vast tracts of land and many of the quivering subjects are sh uh, and shining treasures of the chieftain Harald to choose from. Uh, troops stand ready, awaiting my command to give them direction. Bring me bounteous plunder. I gain 30 gold and 75 prestige and sack this area um, reducing its development and increasing popular opinion or we already have enough where I spend uh, my piety. So, big raid for money and prestige and sacking it or saying we're good and go with piety. I'm in agreement with the majority of you. Big bounty. Big bounty, big bounty. Now, how much raid loot do we have? 33. Okay, let's continue raiding their everything. Because these guys turned me down. I offered. I offered. But uh, they turned me down. So we're just going to keep raiding. Yeah, we are, uh, the war is basically us continually raiding our enemies, and it's going well. Because we are sacking their everything. There it is. No one's going to have money when we're done. And then we can spend our, our current war spoils to immediately build something in our uh, current holdings. Trading outposts constructed in popcorn. So as you can see, the money that we're making in popcorn has gone up. 
if we mouse over here, as you can see, the supply limit goes up and the supply per month goes up for tax. Oh, look, they have an army again. Okay, they outnumber me. Oh, my counselor just died. Okay, well, that's interesting because I was trying to replace him. And uh, I don't really want to put Flossie in because he has prestige. He's my, um, he's my... So, this guy here doesn't make it for a very capable counselor. Uh, but I'm going to put him in anyway. Because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to take Flossie off of my, uh, champion list. Oh, you know what? I'm staying. I, it says I'm going to probably win, so I'm going I'm to stick around and beat them up. This is the same army I, uh, I, I destroyed earlier. Uh, Chieftain inspires recruitment. So I have forced recruitment of a much larger levy size for uh, 10 years. That's awesome. Okay, yeah, we won soundly against them. Smush. Fire and blood. Oh, here we go again. Another sacking. So, this is the same thing. I gain 30 gold and 75 prestige or lose piety. Um, sacking this guy that uh, stole Nibelheim from us. I think this is kind of a no-brainer, but uh, I'd like for you all to vote on these decisions anyway, even if it is, like, a foregone conclusion. Okay. Super sack. Have I heard of Space Haven? Uh, that's kind of funny, because um, I think I was, like, the first big YouTuber to have a Space Haven series on YouTube. And uh, I was featured by the developer as a Let's Play tutorial. So, yes, I have heard of it. <laughs> I haven't played it since Beta 8, and I know it's, like, Beta 13 now, but I have indeed heard of it. All right, so I'm going to return home um, with all of my raid spoils. Uh, but it also is going to... I'm also going to be able to... Uh, uh, to to sort of decide how I want to spend this money. So, um, where should, or how should I spend the money? So there's a few different choices here. Uh, I can, let me go to decisions here and show you. I can uh, raise a runestone. So I can build buildings, raise a runestone, uh, what else could I do with it? Yeah. Or save it for a title. Those will be my three options. But just because I don't own this doesn't mean I can't uh, create the, the duchy title. Right? I can still create the title. Uh, even if I don't own it all. And it will be a cause for war. Are you raiding me? Oh, come on. Tell me you are. Alright, stop being a raiding army. And, uh... Raid loot has been delivered. As you can see, I have just enough for the title now. Um, after completely messing with them. Uh, but we still have hostilities. So I'm not going to disband just yet because uh, there's the possibility of them wanting some sort of retribution. Alright, looks like you guys want me to save a title. Um, should I make the duchy now. So is this how you want me to use my money? And Tyke likes me better. Okay, I don't need to sway Tyke anymore. He is plus 90 something or another to me. Uh, everybody in my current council seems to be fine. Uh, so let's take a look at my court and look at anyone that has particularly low reputation. 
for my champions. So Tyke, we're good. This courtier here, uh, and this courtier I have particularly bad uh, rep, but that's probably because they're Catholic than anything else. Uh, here's a champion of mine who I have bad rep with. Let me sway, let me sway Signy, actually, my uh, doctor. She's my court physician, and uh, doesn't hurt for your doc to like you. All right, so yes, I should make the duchy title now. Let's create it. I am now a mighty Jarl. Um, as you can see, I have negative prestige as a result of probably holding too many tiles. Is that is that the case? No. Hang on. I'm trying to figure out why my prestige uh, per month went to the Kaputskis. Um, all right. So I have a rightful claim on Nibelheim now uh, that I am the Duchess of that. So here, uh, here's my titles that I currently hold. I hold the duchy title of Gula, whatever that is called. Um, here, let me rename this to something more pronounceable. Agamon. And the adjective for this will be um, Sagan. All right, there it is. The Jarl of Agamon. Okay, cool. Uh, sweet. I think it is my man of arms uh, because I'm drafted, I suspect. So... I think I can disband now. I don't think uh, I don't think there will be any retribution from them. So let me just disband. And uh, at this point, what I'm going to do is ooh, toil and hard work. All right, let me have you vote on this. I was going to put up a new goals, but uh, this got in the way. My daughter Sky, this is my eldest daughter, has been impressed with one of our household champions for a very long time. After finally meeting a person, she has been repeating the warrior's words to herself, work hard, and you can master anything. I can either say indeed, and she gains the trait diligent, which I happen to be diligent as well. Uh, I can gain stress and tell her that I must tell her to never forget uh, the part others play in her greatness, which gives her the trait generous instead of diligent. Or, um, I can give her the trait patient and gain stress. So, there are three choices here. Uh, it's basically diligent, generous, or patient. The choice one is the path that she's meant to be on. Choice two and choice three, uh, force her to divert from that path at the cost of my own stress knowing that I am shaping her into something that she's not. And uh, diligent is not necessarily a bad trait. It gives plus one to everything. Uh, it does make you gain more stress under stressful conditions. Does this even need a vote? Maybe not, but I'm going to have you vote for it anyway. But it looks like, indeed, we're going to send her on that path. Okay. Next goal. Let's get the new choices up. So the older choices here, I'm gonna I'm gonna delete and refund those that uh, submitted it. Um, so uh, go to we can retake uh, Nibelheim or try to at least. We can um, become the Duchess of Viken. We can go raiding, uh, use or get better champions, and use a spycraft, or um, take the north. 
those are sort of loose interpretations for the goals that you all had offered, but uh, we'll loosely interpret it. The End of Peace. In whatever the kind of name that is. Attempt at improving my reputation. My incompetent chancellor has agreed to a treaty that cancels out part of our old treaty with uh, the Jarl down here that took Nibelheim. As the war Jarl sees it, he is free to declare war when we want. So our truce with the South ends. Convenient. He uh, accidentally canceled out our peace treaty. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna... You really, you are an incompetent old fool, but uh, even fools can be right once in a, t once in a while. Um, I can replace him, though, with uh, Stain, who uh, might be a more capable person to not screw up. It is good timing, though. Because retake Nibelheim seems to be the popular option. So, let's uh, close that out. We'll do that. Retake Nibelheim. Can you stop moving the windows to the left when they pop up? Oh, I put them behind the uh, the pa panel. Yeah, I'll try to do that. So if we take a look here at... Uh, oh, that's the wrong one. They have... Oh, God. So they're going to call on their allies, and they have a ridiculously superior force. Uh, which is the problem. So if I am to try to retake Nibelheim, I need to drive a wedge between Vestfold and, uh, you know, I think I think what needs to happen is I need to catch them when they're currently in a war of their own. So currently, they are attacking eastward, actually. So they might not have the forces uh, to deal with me. So he's allied... He's allied to the person that owns Nibelheim. He's in a truce with uh, the South. And he is currently at war with the East, but losing. Is the North weaker? Uh, they are a little weaker. If we, if we take a look here. Um, let's see. If we take a look here. This chieftain here has a very weak army. Uh, in this duchy, Naudema, whatever that's called. And then, if we look a little nor even more north, um, another weak army, even more north. So the, the two northern duchies are like, um, easy peasy. The problem is, Upland here is very strong, and if we try to split the difference, they might end up attacking us anyway, and just, um, making it difficult for us to, uh, to win definitively anyway so to analyze the situation if we want to i'm gonna put this up as a goal again it would be easier if we if we take a look at these here uh they're currently in a war so they're even spread thin and they're currently in a war with uh the one north of them so they're they're actually warring with each other right now and they don't have any allies so they are um, they're actually pretty, they're ripe for the picking, those two. Uh, I'm gonna call them Halo and Naum. Halo and Naum are ripe for the picking, if you want me to go that way. Now, if you take a look at Upland here, uh, Upland is, is a pretty sizable opponent. As you can see, if I, if I try to conquer them, it says we're similar, actually. Interesting. So, if that's the case, it might actually be a good time to try to take Mary here. Uh, combining Latheim with Mary, which would be its own duchy. As you can see, uh, it's part of the same duchy. So there's really three options that I foresee. There is, or four options, but I'm going to wheel them down to three. There is going far north uh, to these two these two kingdoms here, um, or, or duchies rather, and, and messing with either one of them. Uh, going direct north. Or going for Nibelheim. And I know we just voted on Nibelheim, but we've analyzed it. And there's a possibility of, if we try to take Nibelheim, uh, Vestfold rallies 
and uh, makes it very, very difficult to take Nibelheim without, uh, you know, against, you know, if we if we analyze this here, uh, they have 2,700 troops. Now, with my current prestige level, I could rally larger armies paying prestige, and I'm willing to do that, of course. Um, and then uh, additionally, um, not that we can afford mercenaries or anything, but additionally, if we wait a little bit longer, our levies will fill up again as well. So there's a lot of other things that we could do. So um, what I'm going to ask you is a war target. So we can go Nibelheim. We can go Upland, which is uh, just north. Naum. I'm just going to call him Naum or Halo. So I know you voted on Nibelheim, but now that we've analyzed it and it is the hardest to capture, uh, that might not be the best call. But again, it's I'm fine with either way. And then as we travel north, uh, most enemies don't really have spearmen, which means that these ha armed footmen are not particularly effective. But um, in hills, taiga, and forest, archers are good, so I might want to expand my archer uh, amount as well. Look at Sweden. Uh, yeah, Sweden is... I mean, the king of Sweden here is massive. I could try to form an alliance with Sweden and hide behind that alliance if I want to try to take uh, Norway instead. So there's always that possibility. But um, these leaders, of course, start large. I, I started as a tiny little backwater no one. Um... But yeah, there are there are some other larger leaders here that uh, that have a lot of weight to throw around, and these guys are getting kind of old. So as you can see, they have you know large family tree and all that. All right, Upland. So if I'm attacking Upland, um, should I add more men at or what men at arms should I add? So I'll try to uh, list. The significant ones here. So we've got uh, Ascarls. I'm gonna avoid the veterans just because of how. Well, I'll put them in. Rangian veterans. They're just expensive. Bondi. Uh, Pikemen. I, I don't think Pikemen's even worth putting in. Uh, more bowmen. More armored. Footmen, Vigmen, Shielded Bowmen, Horsemen, Light Footmen. Uh, I know it's not all going to fit, so just know that it... Oh, no, it did. Okay, good. So I'll read off the advantages. Light Footmen here, uh, they counter heavy infantry, and they're good in forest, taiga, and jungle. So we are sort of, you know, if we're going against... Uh, if we're going against Upland here, these are mostly hills and mountainous, mind you. Uh, Horseman here is good in plains and dry land. They don't do good in harsh winter, uh, which obviously where we are is mostly harsh winter. And they counter archers. Vigmen here counter skirmishers, and they're good in the winter. They're good winter troops, but they don't have particular uh, advantages in the hills. Bowmen, however, do have advantages in the hills, which is one of the reasons why I said getting more bowmen might be a good uh, thing to do. And they counter skirmishers. Uh, they pike may counter cavalry, which no one's really going to be using up here in the north because cavalry is just so tough, but they do have terrain advantages in the mountains uh, and hills. So pikemen are not terrible. Uh, Bondi are good winter soldiers as well, and uh, they have disadvantages in the hills, unfortunately, so they would be in mountains. So they are good winter soldiers, but they would be weak in these mountains. The veterans here are good in hills, and they are strong in winter, but they're just very expensive upkeep. Um, and then Huskarls are the same, are roughly like the veterans, but, um, just slightly cheaper. Again, good in Forest and Taiga and Winter. And then we have the Armored Footmen, who, 
you know, I've I have to counter spearmen, but honestly, I I probably shouldn't have even gotten the armored footmen in hindsight. And I can always destroy the regiment too. Um. So, it looks like more bowmen seem to be the uh, obvious choice. Should I disband the footmen? Because I don't think they're really countering anything in particular. So if I'm increasing bowmen, there we go. I'm going to increase it up to 300 bowmen. It's very, very expensive, but uh, we're about to take on a rather sizable uh, target, so I might as well have as many as I can get. And then if I disband the footmen, um, I will put up another question, which is, should I add in uh, Huskarls or uh, or Pikemen? Because Pikemen, Pikemen would be particularly good in... Um... So the advantage of Pikemen, which is why... The advantage of Pikemen is they're really good in the mountains and the hills, and they would counter cavalry, which would counter our archers. And the advantage of Huskarls is they're just really tough. Um, so, should I add Huskarls or Pikemen? And we will... Oh, excuse me. Lost in thought. My son and heir, Can, is an unusually calm child. Uh, the others play with their wild games. Can often withdraws to some silent corner. He does not speak a lot. But I can tell he always he is always thinking about something. What's on his mind? So he's going to gain a pensive. Let me show you what pensive looks like. Stewardship and learning. He's a smart kid. Inheriting intelligence from his parents. Okay. Um, All right, so pick between those two, and you, your regiment, is going bye-bye. Uh, Trustenia, do you have traits yet? She is charming. She looks to be intrigue or diplomacy. Uh, so I'm going to ask you another question soon as well about that. So it looks like you... I'll leave that up a little bit longer, but it looks like Hasgarls might be the choice to toughen us up. Okay. Nearly a full minute. Alright, Hasgarl group. Now, I do see that my prestige is plummeting, but uh, I'm not worried about that not just yet. Where I'm going to wait for these groups to become, uh, you know, full. And then we can push up against uh, Opland. Uh, so, should I find a diploma? Uh, should I find a. Or what sort of guardian should Trustenia have? Diplomacy. Intrigue or me. I could have included my husband, but I think I'm just going to do a better job of it than he would, so. Yeah, our levies are almost full. Trading outpost built in uh, Emheim. Awesome. So Emheim now has a trading outpost, which will increase taxes. So as you can see, the uh, the tax here, it's small, but the uh, the trading outpost is definitely helping. It's just reducing due to low county control here significantly, but the county control is increasing with time. All right. Looks like an intrigue guardian might be what's called for. So let's try to figure this out. If, if it is to be Intrigue, uh, who is the most intriguing? 
This courtier is intriguing, but does not like me much. Spineless antagonist. Yeah, I don't think that's a good choice. Um, you, champion, have... Oh, uh, no, intri I was looking at the wrong thing. Let me reanalyze. So this is the purple stat. Uh, I don't really have a lot of people that are highly intriguing here, but it would be it would be him, this champion. So I'm going to have him educate Tristenia. Send proposal. And then I could do the same for Can uh, here, who's my own son, who is pensive. He's looking to be somewhat of a steward, I'd guess. But I could also wait for him to develop more. Um, should I uh, assign a guardian for Can now or later? Can't I sort by stat? Uh, yeah, well, normally you could sort by stat, but I'm looking at... This is a different menu, which you can't really sort by stat like that. If I if I wanted to figure it out like that, what I could do is I could have gone to, like, the Spymaster and sorted it to who'd be a good Spymaster. Like this. Uh, so he has agreed to become the Guardian of Tristenia. Nice. So then if I click on her, I can see her guardian. Um, where is the guardian? Yeah, there. Guardian. And the guardian has martial skill, intrigue skill, and learning. So pretty good guardian. He's also ill, so don't be spreading any disease to me, please. Alright. Assign can later. Okay, I can agree with that. Our levees are just about full. We're just waiting for the Scarls to top up. And then we'll go to war. Uh, except for I'm pregnant. Oh, that's not good timing, but okay. Okay. It's going to be, as you can see uh, here, war with Upland. Which is just to the north. Altamia, thanks for the resub. Uh-oh. Uh, the true enemy of every soldier is uh, complacency, my champion Vim Munder says before widening his stance. We are standing side by side up on my castle walls, looking down on the soldiers constructing drills below. We could exchange the castle's gate for planks of wood and dull the arrows... Uh, in the troops' quivers, he continues, lead the soldiers in a mock charge against the castle and see how well they do in action. I can either say good idea, and my uh, his opinion of me goes up, and I might gain a martial lifestyle perk, or I can uh, say our time is better spent improving our defenses, which gives me gives the holding of Sagan improved defenses for 10 years, which um, I can't seem to mouse it. Okay, here we go. Which is increased garrison size and increased force defense. Uh, let me have you vote. So, Marshall Perk and an unknown chain or improved defenses. And it's a runaway again. Okay. Let's lead. You should lead the defenders. We're probably going to wait to go to war until this chain is over. Under siege, first charge. A tightly shut gate and walls that loom high into the sky. Archers can be seen as shadows moving behind the battlements. And a feeling of genuine excitement permeates the air. In the lull before battle, I turn and address the soldiers. My order rings out loud and clear across the field. I can say, uh, charge the main gate, and I will gain 50 martial life experience. It's a prowess char a challenge, which unfortunately I'm currently pregnant, but still with the pregnancy, my prowess is still pretty good. It's a 70% chance that it will progress very well, and a 30% chance that it will progress poorly. 
Or, alternatively, I can say, bring out the ladders, and the attack will progress well, but uh, at the cost of, of course, uh, the 50 experience. But a guarantee progress. So, a 70-30 or a guarantee. A 70-30 with a bonus or a guarantee, I should say. What is my current prowess? My current prowess is 15, which is good, even if I'm pregnant. Still good. Okay, we're gonna charge the main gates. And it goes very, very well. We walk in practically unopposed. Jeez. Von Gunder, or whatever your name is, you gotta defend. Under siege, every step of the way. The stairwell echoes as another dulled weapon bounces off the middle pillar. For the second time in a matter of minutes, I curse the tight spirals that block us from swinging our weapons at the defenders. This is why in castles, um, spiral staircases go a certain way to give advantage to right-handed troops with the high ground where you can swing right from top right to bottom left, whereas the attackers going upstairs can't because their arms hit the wall. It's uh, it's sort of the way that castles were built. So most castle staircases are built to uh, benefit defender, right-handed defenders. Odd, odd fact that, you know, why not? So I can uh, take the gamble. Don't let up, we will overwhelm them. A guaranteed experience, a diplomatic challenge, uh, which my diplomacy is uh, 10, average. And a 57% very well, 42% poorly. Uh, one at a time, stay alert, which is a almost guarantee that it progresses well, 92%. Or stay behind me, I will protect you, uh, which is, it will definitely progress well. Um, I gain a little bit of stress, and I have a 20% chance to become... Um, wounded so just to re recap guaranteed experience a diplomatic challenge and a almost 50 50 um a 92 7 with no particular benefit or a guaranteed very well uh at a chance for wounded Ooh, this is a this is tighter Oh man. Okay, so it looks like uh, choice two is almost, it's leading just by a vote. Vote quick. It's ending this in five, four, three, two. All right. It uh, progresses well. We, we eventually take the stairs. Battlement Bravado. The final step up, uh, taking the final step up onto the walls surrounding the castle, I survey the scene. Many soldiers have been lost to the archers on the walls, but will we will not be deterred. One after another, we overwhelm the defenders and stand victorious over the fallen. I take a deep breath, and then it's time to press on again. We are winning, but there's no room for mistakes. So choice one, everybody with me. It's guaranteed uh, experience with a martial challenge and an 85% chance to progress well because of our martial uh, ability. Archers take up positions. Uh, so this is a 90-10. Or hit them hard, show no mercy. I gain dread. It's guaranteed to pro progress well. But also, Vimunder becomes uh, injured. And this is an act of tyranny causing my subjects to lose five opinion of me. Uh, which is rough. And if you're wondering who Vamunder is, he's one of my champions uh, who goes to war with me. All right, so here's the poll. Yoda, what would you vote on? Yoda would vote on the guaranteed experience, I think. 
What are you looking at, buddy? I don't know. All right, everybody with me. It progresses very well. Cool. Uh, still, my Huskarls haven't uh, replenished fully. Under siege to storm a castle. The castle is ours. Among the celebrating soldiers, I find Vimunder, who congratulates me on a charge well led. Look at them, my lady. The, char uh, the change of pace did them good. Even you seem reinvigorated, even though your castle was just lost to attackers. Our enemies never stand a chance. So, I gain a martial lifestyle perk, and I still gain uh, improved defense for 10 years. Nice. All right, let's take Sappers, which increases siege progress. And we're one perk away from Strategist, which gives us uh, three Marshal, one Diplomacy, enemy fatal casualties go up, and uh, crossing water does not impart penalties, which is really, really good. And we're going to be waiting until the Huskarls are full for us to go to war with uh, Upland. And we have similar sized forces, so it's not going to be necessarily easy. In fact, let me increase my Hescarls up just to make sure that I have some advantages. Now, my prestige is going to really take a hit for it. And yeah, I'll reset the rally point. Move to... I just want to rally straight up into their territory, but yeah, let's rally to... Uh, Ladaheim. What are you doing, dude? Get the heck out of my territory. They're not raiders, so I don't know what they're doing. Uh, should I, should I determine a personal deity before we uh, start this? Look at this map. And we own this. <laughs> oh, starting small. All right, let's do a personal deity here. Thank you for voting so quick. I know I don't leave it up very long. So, we have four options here. We can be a devo devotee of Odin, which gives us uh, intrigue and a tiny little bit of piety. We can be a devotee of Ulr, which gives us martial and uh, some battle uh, movement speed and advan uh, advantages in winter. We can be a devotee of Thor, which gives us stewardship and prowess, or a devotee of Freyr, which gives us fertility and control growth. So, here we go. Uh, hang on, let me go back. So you can see the uh, the four choices here. as described
Thank you for watching Crusader Kings 3 Northern Lords, which originally aired live on Twitch. This series is a result of a poll I put out every week where my viewers get to determine what I play on Thursdays on Twitch. As of now, there has only been one stream or five hours of Crusader Kings 3, and if there is to be any more, it will have to win in the polls. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timer, and it also has links to these polls I was just mentioning. Thank you so very much for watching. I'll catch you next episode and hopefully an upcoming stream.